Hi, I'm Tom Jones at the Kennedy Space Center, sharing with you one of my favorite astronaut stories. I think the thing that strikes me most about my astronaut career, and I had many varied experiences uh, on board four shuttle missions, was my last trip to the International Space Station on a shuttle Atlantis. Now, for a mission specialist like me, uh, who was an arm operator and a flight engineer and a scientist on board my first three missions, the thing that I really wanted to do the most in my astronaut career was take a spacewalk. And that is the subject of, I think, the dreams of almost all the astronauts. Even if you're a test pilot and you get to land a shuttle, you'd still like to do, be able to do a spacewalk. For me, that was the pièce de résistance of uh, my astronaut uh, aspirations. So I trained for about seven years to get ready for my first spacewalk. And I was going to be on the shuttle Columbia, and with my friend Tammy Jernigan, we were going to rehearse a space station assembly task. We had the tools, we had components of the space station, and we were going to rehearse those techniques in two spacewalks lasting about 12 hours on the shuttle Columbia. Well, on our flight, we were in space for about 10 days, and on American Thanksgiving uh, in November of 1996, we got the go to go outside on our first two spacewalks. We were both rookie spacewalkers, and we had been dreaming about this moment for every one of the 130 hours we spent underwater in this swimming pool getting ready. So this was a big moment, uh, a big release of nervous tension. We were going to go outside and experience the vacuum of space in our suits for the first time. So we got the go for mission control and the uh, next step was for Tammy to open up the hatch and let us go floating out into the cargo bay of the shuttle Columbia. She was the lead spacewalker, I was number two. So she turned the handle that opened up the airlock hatch. Now it's just one turn of the handle and then the hatch drops down and out of the way and then you can begin your spacewalk and all the magic begins to happen. Well, she began to turn the handle and it would only move about 30 degrees out of the complete circuit that it was supposed to make to open up the hatch um, mechanism. And it stopped after 30 degrees. So she struggled with it for about five minutes. She finally said, Tom, you're gonna have to have a try at this because I can't get it to, to unstick. And so like uh, two hippopotami in the front seat of a Volkswagen, we managed to shimmy past each other in this slim confines of the airlock, uh, uh, airlock aboard Columbia. It's like uh, two hippos in the uh, front seat of a Volkswagen. And we're sliding past each other. I finally got to put my muscles on the uh, hatch handle and I could not get it to move more than this 30 degrees. Now something was seriously wrong with the hatch mechanism and it was plainly jammed in some fashion mechanically. So we finally had to get on the radio and say, Houston, we have a problem. And we weren't witty enough to say that, but we did report that the hatch handle had jammed. And you can just imagine the scene in Mission Control where the uh, flight director looks at the EVA instructor and says, Glenda, you trained these people for a year and they can't even open a doorknob. So they swung into Apollo 13 mode down there and began to pull out all the schematics and ask us to troubleshoot the hatch mechanism. Uh, one of the questions I was asked by my Capcom friend, Bill MacArthur, was, Tom, are you turning the handle clockwise? Now, yes I was, we were turning it in the right direction. What must they have thought of my mental presence of mind up there to ask me a question like that? They had to actually go through all the possibilities to make sure that we were not missing something that could be jamming this hatch. Well, after two hours of troubleshooting, we um, were skunked. Uh, they advised us to repressurize the airlock and they canceled the spacewalk for that evening. And that was a tremendous disappointment to us both. We got back out of the airlock, got out of our suits, and then it was time for Thanksgiving dinner. And we were so depressed at this failure of the spacewalk that you can imagine how joyless a meal that was. You know, we had dehydrated asparagus and froze, uh, uh, de uh, freeze dried strawberries. We had some dinty more uh, turkey and potato and gravy dinners that were sort of lukewarm from our shuttle convection oven. It was not the kind of Thanksgiving dinner that you would like to repeat. And it's probably the worst one I'll ever have in my life. It's certainly the only one I'll have in space. So we thought the next day we'd be able to go outside on this canceled spacewalk. We thought that overnight while we slept, the uh, engineers would come up with a solution. And disappointingly, the next morning, they did not have a solution. They asked us to do a series of troubleshooting steps during the day, and we went to bed a second night, thinking that we would have a chance to go outside. We still had plenty of time left in the mission. So the next morning, uh, usually the, the shuttle crew would be awakened by music sent up from Mission Control. And that morning, the tune that they played to wake us up was uh, a tune from The Doors. And it was a, a music uh, clip called break on through to the other side. And you would think that that would have been the good news, uh, that we were going to have the problem solved and we get to go outside that, w that day on our, on our spacewalk. And in fact, uh, the radio crackled after the music was played and Dom Gorey, our Capcom, came on and said, uh, the managers have just come out of the meeting and they have canceled the two spacewalks to avoid the risk 
to one of the satellites that we had deployed. And uh, that really uh, was a crushing disappointment. Uh, I don't mean to tell a, a sad story, but we got both of our spacewalks canceled on this mission. Now, uh, it wasn't until we got on the ground that we found out the exact cause of the uh, canceled spacewalk. We had a small screw that had jammed the hatch me mechanism shut, floated out from its receptacle, and jammed the gears at the worst possible time. But we had about two extra days in space with these spacewalks being canceled, where I got to look outside the shuttle uh, and looked at the summit of Mount Everest and the beautiful blue of the Bahamas and the oceans surrounding those islands and uh, the thunderstorms over the Pacific Ocean. got to see my hometown several times and I realized after a couple of days, you know, I'd had my spacewalks canceled but I was a, a member of a crew of a United States space shuttle. I had four good friends in orbit with me and it was really hard to complain about the situation that I was in at that moment. It was really a privilege to be there and even though there was disappointment involved, there was also the joy and satisfaction of completing our mission. And uh, it was about two days late, but Thanksgiving finally came to me, Tom Jones, on board the Space Shuttle Columbia. Now, to put a happy ending on the story, I was assigned to another flight on the shuttle Atlantis in 2001. I got to lead three spacewalks at the International Space Station. You can read about that experience in my book, Skywalking, an astronaut's memoir. Have a great time at the Kennedy Space Center and visiting this website. I hope you'll have some questions for me and the other astronauts working here, and we'll see you down at Florida's Cape Canaveral and Kennedy Space Center.